Much ado is being made over the potentially threatening asteroid 2024 YR4 and the possible and apparently growing danger it poses to Earth should it hit, of which there's a small but significant chance that it could. This is a little bit more than non-zero, but not that high yet. The asteroid was discovered on December 27th of last year, just a few months ago, by the Chilean station of the International Asteroid Warning Network, or IAWN. This triggered the first stage of our burgeoning planetary defense response systems, and has a small but rising chance of hitting Earth on December 22nd, 2032. The asteroid is a member of the type of asteroid known as the Apollo Group, near-Earth asteroids that cross Earth's orbit, and the object represents a threat, but not a major one yet. That has to be said, and its threat level is likely to drop from here on out. So this asteroid is somewhere between 40 and 90 meters in diameter. Dinosaur killer, this is not. For comparison, the impactor that caused the extinction of the dinosaurs was much, much larger, at an estimated 10 kilometers. Interestingly, the end Cretaceous extinction asteroid impact isn't actually the largest one Earth shows evidence for. That distinction goes to the Vreedfort impact structure in South Africa that struck about 2 billion years ago and was as much as 25 kilometers in diameter making it the largest known object to strike Earth since the end of the Hadean Eon, long ago. So on a scale of extinction-causing asteroids that have hit Earth, 2024 YR4 isn't even a blip. It's a so-called city killer, rather than a dinosaur killer. There are two scales of measuring asteroid threat levels. The first measurement scale used for impact hazards from near-Earth objects is known as the Torino Scale and it runs from 0 to 10, with 10 being the most dangerous. 0 means no chance of hitting Earth, or at least causing damage. Meteorites that routinely fall and land on Earth, doing no extensive damage, fall into the 0 category as well. You have more of a chance of getting hit by a rock slide than a meteorite, but it does happen. Some percent of asteroids will also routinely score a 1 upon discovery. There are many of these each year. These are considered normal and no threat, and usually always get revised to zero as more telescope observations are made and the orbits are further constrained. A rating of 2 is where it starts getting to be of some small concern. A rating of 2 just means that an asteroid is going to make a somewhat close pass to Earth, but not enough of a worry to merit public attention or concern. And again, as things get revised, a rating of 2 usually drops to zero. A rating of 3 is where 2024 YR4 currently is sitting. This is a close encounter that has a greater than 1% chance of hitting Earth and causing local destruction, hence a city killer. That doesn't mean it will hit a city, just that it could do serious damage if it did. But it has to be remembered here that a majority of Earth's surface is ocean, so chances are if there were a strike, it would happen over water and there would be little damage. If it happened over land, most of Earth's land is not city, and indeed the largest impacts over land over the last century tended to be over the vastness of Siberia, such as Tunguska, and a more obscure meteorite fall known as Sakodia Lin that went off like a grenade in 1947 and sprayed a mountainside with nickel-iron meteorite shrapnel. So the odds of this asteroid hitting Earth are poor, Right now, depending on the metric used, the chances range from 2.2% to 3.1%. Though again, it has to be said that as further constraints are put on the orbit of this asteroid, that is more likely to drop to zero than rise higher, even though it actually has risen a bit since discovery. At a rating of 3, however, this is the lowest rating that is seen to warrant some public attention if the threat of impact is less than a decade away. In this case, it's 2032, and that's why there is some attention on it currently. A rating of 4 is the highest we've ever seen, and it happened briefly with the infamous asteroid Apophis. So this rating warrants public attention and monitoring by astronomers, and would cause regional damage if something like this were to hit, but again, these asteroids are small. 
99942 Apophis is only 450 meters at its greatest extent. It was initially somewhat scary and reached a rating of 4 in December of 2004. It's bigger than 2024 YR4, warranting a higher rating, but the chance for Apophis to hit Earth was 2.7% on April 13th, 2029, less than where 2024 YR4 is right now. That was rapidly downgraded, but Apophis sat at 1 for a while longer. One of the reasons for concern for Apophis was that there was a gravitational keyhole, only about 800 meters wide initially, that if it had passed through, that it would have put it on a collision course for Earth on Easter Sunday, April 13th, 2036. Apophis is unusual because we actually saw it. These things are relatively rare, being the size that it was. We should see a pass like that of an object only about once every 800 years, and an impact from such an object once every 80,000 years. Today the chances of Apophis hitting Earth in 2036 is down to 1 in a million. No longer a threat for that year, but oddly, that asteroid still requires monitoring. The reason is that Apophis could hit another keyhole, not likely, but a non-zero chance in 2029, that would send it on an altered trajectory close to Earth, and potentially hit a second keyhole and whack Earth in 2068. Extremely unlikely, but not impossible. But again, this is dropping because JPL measurements from 2021 show no chance of it hitting Earth any time within the next century. Apophis will remain a potentially hazardous object for about another thousand years, and then Venus or Mars will gravitationally toss it out of Earth's way. Incidentally, there is a more comprehensive threat scale known as the Palermo scale that actually has six asteroids on it now, all ranking zero on the Torino scale that are higher in threat level than Apophis. The Torino scale starts getting spooky, however. Here we move from yellow alert to orange. Five is a potential impact. Again, can be revised upward or downward, more likely downward, but this is an impact that the world governments are going to want to create contingency plans for. Six is very concerning. This is where more widespread global devastation starts, and it isn't likely that an asteroid of this magnitude could be reduced to below a 1 or 2, and not likely to 0. 7 is worse than that. As an aside, we haven't ever gone above 4 on the Torino scale for Earth. We have for other planets in the solar system for their equivalent of the Torino scale. In 2014, the comet C-2013-A1 had a 1 in 1,250 chance of hitting Mars, which it scores on Mars' Torino scale as a 6, and had it hit, it would have yielded between 5 and 24 billion megatons. Almost unimaginable, but Mars has seen worse. But that chance was later reduced to 1 or maybe 2. The worst was Jupiter in 1994, when comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 broke apart and impacted and would have ranked on the very upper end of the scale, with a high degree of certainty of collision. Then we move to Red Alert, where collision is absolutely certain. 8 will cause localized destruction, and if over an ocean, a serious tsunami threat. These happen on the order of 1 every few thousand years. Humans have survived them before. Indeed, it is thought that the impactor that created Meteor Crater in Arizona would have been an 8. And indeed, the 1908 Tunguska event is sometimes also placed as an 8. Most people on Earth had little idea that Tunguska even happened, given that it entered over a remote area of Siberia, but it locally did a lot of damage to wildlife, trees, and even some of the people that lived relatively nearby. Ironically, a much more recent meteorite that was rather dramatic was Chelyabinsk in 2013, which broke thousands of windows across areas of Russia and injured 1,500 people. But its kinetic energy wasn't actually that high. It was mainly the shock waves from the high altitude detonation of the meteorite that were the problem. And it actually would have ranked a zero had it been detected beforehand. A nine on the scale is increasingly worse and devastating and happens once in 10,000 to a few hundred thousand years. Number 10 is lights out. That would create global tsunamis, if over an ocean, thousands of feet high. 
and on land massive firestorms that would end civilization, and almost certainly would be our extinction event, along with much flora and fauna on Earth. The end Cretaceous impactor would have ranked a 10. 2024 YR4 made its last closest approach to Earth on December 25th, 2024. As of April, it will have moved too distant to be observed from ground-based telescopes as it heads out somewhere near Jupiter, but will still be observable by infrared telescopes, including James Webb, which is scheduled to observe the asteroid in March and May of this year. The asteroid is most likely a stony type of asteroid, with a rapid rotation rate, a little less than 20 minutes. Currently, it is being monitored by the Very Large Telescope in Chile, the Danish Telescope, and the Magdalena Ridge Observatory in the US. What makes 2024 YR4 different, however, is that it actually has surpassed Apophis as the most dangerous asteroid we know of, by percentage of a chance it could hit Earth. 3.1% is high enough to be remarkable, but it's not high enough to be worried about yet, and it has to be said Asteroid threat levels tend to get downgraded, whereas this one was actually upgraded, which is very unusual, at least by NASA's metric. ESA's metric is 2.8%, as they use different criteria. It's interesting, however, that we actually live, if all goes well, among the very last days of large-scale asteroid threats. Several space missions, such as DART, have proven the concept that asteroids can be deflected if we have time and discover them early, and efforts worldwide at asteroid detection are ongoing. The International Asteroid Warning Network, for example, first issued a warning about 2024 YR4 on January 29th, when the probability rose above 1%. A formal warning would be issued if the chances rise above 10%, instructing UN member states to consider preparations. With time and more observations, significant revisions on the asteroid's trajectory will be made, and again, it's very likely to go down. Far more likely to drop in threat level than rise. But one large problem here is that while this asteroid is relatively small, it's also fast, and could hit Earth at 40,000 miles per hour. At that speed, it would likely be an airburst, and not survive intact long in the atmosphere but that would mean that it would yield a force of 8 megatons, which is hundreds of times more powerful than Hiroshima, propagating hugely damaging shockwaves. It's not likely to form an impact crater. It can, but only if its size is on the upper end of the estimates. As to where it could hit, it's wide-ranging, including North and South America, the Pacific, South Asia, parts of Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and other areas. But this would not happen for years, so as estimates become constrained and we know more, it's always possible and we will have enough time to relocate populations temporarily, or even potentially deflect the object. And we may not even need an impactor. There are ideas out there that lasers could be used to push asteroids around by vaporizing bits of their surface, or gravitationally deflect it with a spacecraft, or even a nuclear detonation though that plan is not favored because it could simply shatter the object without deflecting it, not making much of a difference. There are ways past this, but it's important to remember the chances of 2024 YR4 hitting Earth remain very low, not worth worrying about yet, but well worth paying attention to. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently opining on a lighter note. So I conducted the latest interview today on Event Horizon due out next week, on Thursday, and this one was a little bit different from my normal astrophysics stuff. I spoke to Dr. Jennifer Mather, one of the world's foremost experts on octopus and cephalopod intelligence, and was a chief scientific advisor behind the award-winning documentary, My Octopus Teacher. Get ready for a fun Event Horizon episode. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.